dent them. You couldn't bend them. You couldn't do anything with them. They were, you could run into a wall and it didn't hurt the, the engine. You run into a wall with your existing cars, they crumble up. And it uh, actually is a safety feature because as they crumble, they absorb energy and it saves the passengers' lives. But actually, the car is, the car is more efficient, but the uh, engine is less efficient. And, uh, and it's kind of a thing that the gas companies want to tell, oh, we got the most, Honda talks about the most efficient engine on the market. No, it's a little bit lighter car on the market. And when they talk about more efficiency, they're talking about one-tenth of one percent more efficiency. Because it's a catch-22 the way engines are designed. They just can't get any more out of it. You can't create energy from nothing. The only way you can create the energy is to burn more of the fuel you have. And what you're doing is you're burning less of the fuel. And so now that you have a more efficient engine or car, you're actually burning more fuel. If I took a an engine from the 70s and put it in today's lightweight cars, you get a much better, better gas mileage than what you have today. That seems like it's the wrong way, but let me tell you, that's what happened. We've been going the wrong way. As this country and the world has been going, we've been going the wrong way. We have not gone to solving the problem. We've gone to just changing the problem from one area to another. All the time making everybody think that we're doing great things, and we haven't. If you look at uh, the biggest car that's on the road today is probably a uh, Mercedes or a Cadillac or something like that. And they're probably about 16 feet long. Look at the Cadillacs that they have with the big tail fins and so forth. Not only were heavier, but they're 21 to 22 feet long. They wouldn't even fit in half the garages that are around today. I know my dad had a 41 Cadillac and we had to knock out part of the wall just to get the car in the garage. It was so big. The, today's cars would fit in very easily. They're smaller, less room. In fact, that 41 Cadillac, the back seat was so much room in the back seat, and it was only a two-door car. It had so much room that we had a collie dog that laid on the floor. And our feet weren't on top of the collie dog. We had enough room for him to lay in front of where our feet were. People don't think about those things, and, and it's really we should think about. So what I'm trying to promote now with this little talk to you people is let's go redesign the engine. The engine's already been designed. Let's go use it. It's designed, it's built, it's not being used by hardly anyone. It's really important that we start using technology for everything we do, and it's here, and it's now. Our company is dedicated to taking existing waste. Waste is some form of energy that got placed into another farm. We took some energy and we made paper. Paper still has energy, you can burn it. You can heat up your house with it. That's energy. Plastic. Plastic has energy. In fact, it's one of the best energy things around. Created from fuel and oil. Created plastic. All your synthetic fibers, all created from oil. Let's use those synthetic things. You can make synthetic fuel from the synthetic materials that you have. Worldwide, there's a lot of countries that don't have any oil, but they all have waste. So what we want to do is convert the waste into usable energy. That's great. Now that we got usable energy, let's don't burn it in an engine that puts the pollution back in the atmosphere again. We don't want to do that. Let's use an engine that doesn't put any pollution back in. And that's possible. Because we took this engine using government equipment, supplied to us the very best we could, and we couldn't measure any pollutant as we could identify it above zero. Not even NOx. What NOx is, nitrogen and oxygen. And nitrogen and oxygen are in our atmosphere. But to get them to combine in a, in a way that's not as harmful to us, it takes a certain amount of heat. In the engine that we designed, we used some of the nitrogen by pressurizing it. Remember when you pressurize uh, oxygen or nitrogen, you can turn it into liquid. And liquid nitrogen is very cold. We use some of that cold nitrogen to keep our exhaust 
cool enough that we never create NOx because we never get to the temperature where, where oxygen and nitrogen will mix together again. In fact, when Dr. Paul, which is the inventor of this engine, first came to me in 1988, he was promoting it for a military application because I had an exhaust that was so cool you couldn't use infrared detection to send a missile up the exhaust pipe. It was too cool for the existing infrared to detection thing, so you couldn't shoot down an aeroplane or anything else with a, 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 a equipment or a missile that was using the heat from the exhaust to, to, uh, to shoot it down. So what we want to do now is let's get our plans together. Let's use the technologies that are available. Let's clean up our atmosphere. Let's do the things we need that really solve a lot of problems that we have. And you think of problems that problems in other parts of the world are more severe than they are here in the United States. In all the South Pacific, those are islands everywhere. They've run out of land. They keep creating people, and as people are 